23 Nigerian states increased their bilateral loans by 64.26% uh, to $462.81 million by June 2023, despite the fall in Naira. And this indicates a growing interest in foreign loans by state governors, raising concerns about fiscal sustainability. In 2018, Nigeria secured a $475 million loan from France for specific development projects in Kano, Lagos, and Ogun states. And so uh, this morning, I'm being joined by a chartered accountant, Akin Fatunke, and he will be shedding more light on this. Thank you so much, Akin, for joining us on Business Edge. Thank you very much, Lekon. It's a no, pleasure to be here. Of course. Now, the increase in bilateral loans showed a growing appetite for this type of loan by state governors. And uh, this is at the same time the Federal Allocation, um, the Account Allocation Committee had actually um, shed more light to this, uh, talking about the sharing of the allocation. So I'd like to find out from you how pressing were the needs for these states and is there any justification for the borrowings? Naturally, Lekong, there will be justifications for borrowings, especially if there are borrowings that are going to infrastructure and not consumption. But I know for a fact that all this while, I do not see the, um, the political will on the part of uh, the states, you know, uh, to do that, and for indeed for the federal government itself. I know for sure that um, over time we've had to be borrowing to consume. Remember the dilapidating uh, subsidy <laughs> that has crippled Nigeria and has um, made a few people to, to be happy. Um, so for me, uh, I think to the extent that I have not seen the audited financial statements of each of these states, who, by the way, um, nearly 90% of them are not uh, viable in terms of the kind of revenue that they need to service those loans. So in time past, I know in Ogun State had to borrow money to do land reclamation, you have to do some um, transportation uh, infrastructures in Lagos as other examples. So uh, for me, uh, I do not, for the life of me, can stand in front of a camera, stand in front of you and say, I know what this uh, being used for, more especially if you don't forget, we had the NSAS thing and we had a, a lot of some of the infrastructures that we had that had not stood the test of time by way of destruction and what have you. And then again, the senility of some of those, of, of those structures, again, all shrouded, all shrouded in um, corruptive and corruptive tendencies. Well, that's quite interesting, uh, Akin, to have said that um, these funds uh, were meant to have been channeled into infrastructural development, but then we have not seen um, that much, uh, most especially owing to the fact that some states like Ebonin that took a first-time bilateral loan of $31.29 million, and Chigawa that also took a first-time um, loan of about $864,535, um, dollars uh, in terms of loans and then uh, people have not been able to attribute these funds being channeled into areas that would um, speak of infrastructural development in those states. So when we have issues like this, uh, uh, is there a risk of debt distress or over leverage for any of these states uh, given the fact that um, there's meant to be uh, a rapid growth in these states in terms of what is visible but then we're seeing rapid growth in these bilateral loans? I say clearly, it's not just a matter of distress, it's a matter of concern, it's unsustainable, it is evil, it is <laughs> self-immolating, uh, basically because, I mean, if you have not been able to cut your coat according to your crop, and you've not demonstrated the fact that you have the capacity and the discipline um, under accountability to ensure that uh, you you can pay back and then we see uh, cost of doing business around you in your state as a subnational and then of course uh, in the total economy that we find 
uh, we have a bloated uh, kind of uh, governance structure and system of state governor, state deputy governor, you know, a retinue of assistance to assistance to assistance, mm -hmm. all and not, not yielding any quantifiable um, quantifiable idea, say, quantifiable way of wanting to pay back. And the only source of wanting to pay back is the fact allocations. Majority of these are not viable, and then you just depend on fact allocations once in a month, then go back, come back um, the following month when there are resources surrounding you, we are a factor endowment surrounding you and no critical thinking, no critical thinking has been taken to look at them. And I'd like, let me finalize this, uh, uh, within all these states that you are talking about, uh, you just spoken about a boy, a boy was relatively stable until it came into, into now. And then when I have the GABA, you begin to ask yourself, the only thing that I see on my inner page site, it's increasing population. <laughs> I mean, out of school children and all that. Add on to that security issues that is unabating. I therefore will say categorically that these states are not in a position to repay and is more than a red flag. Hmm. And that's a big one. Uh, one thing that actually beats me is um, from whom these states are borrowing from. Because when you take a cursory look at the data, it shows that uh, most of the bilateral loans were owed to AFD, uh, with debt to France growing to about 21.84% uh, to $306.32 million as at the end of June. So why is there a particular leaning towards France, as aside uh, probably looking at the local uh, community and seeing how to raise um, these funds domestically? Like on, on a general terms, uh, when you go for some of these foreign loans, uh, two things happen. One, there's a discipline on the fact that um, you are supposed to now link this to specific projects in our own situation. Uh, the lenders are waiting and they're waiting for you know, external parties, you know, Transparency International, to now look at it and say, is it really going into um, those index projects? Mm, no. The second reason why um, people go for these bilateral loans is because the interest rates, you know, that you have to pay relatively is better and there is a room, a leg room for you to renegotiate. Don't forget the fact that sometimes it comes to the fact that uh, development institutions uh, and the governments now look at it and say, look, this is our own way, not aiding. It's our own way of trying to ensure that is it polio? Uh, is it uh, river blindness that you are looking at? Is, is it water? Is it education and stuff like that? And once they do that, they believe that uh, you know, you should be done dairy and home and dry. Why France? France under Macron had had a developmental agenda that is spoke to Africa. And it's like giving with left hand and then taking back uh, with right hand with the kind of assimilation policy that you now know that is um, now blowing in the face. Uh, Niger, Mali, uh, Burkina Faso, and what have you. And because all these countries under French um, colonization in the past have indexed their earnings. Everything is now dependent on, on France. Now, what France now seems to want to do, in my honest opinion, is now to come to the um, Anglophone of which Nigeria is um, it's a, it's a key one. But for the life of me, I will not forget um, some of the geopolitical shenanigans that happened that um, I know um, under the AFDB, uh, common currency thing that uh, we wanted to do, that I know that France was not solidly behind Nigeria. So that is the reason. China is another one. Don't forget the Chinese. Even though the hypes go here and there, if you fall foul of um, 
repaying your debts. Mm. Sometimes those debt agreements are, <laughs> are written in Chinese and we have not uh, looked at the fine tooth comb yes. to ensure. And of course, th that's still true, Aki, and it still um, makes me wonder that if the attraction has to do with low interest rates, we still see that these loans are still dollar denominated. And when you look at the value in terms of the Naira and the parity, it's always on the high side. So how do we now look at this growing appetite um, for these foreign loans and how it affects the state governor's impact and, of course, Nigeria's overall economic stability and fiscal management? If you're to place it or to weigh to discover that um, the disadvantages might just be more than what the advantage um, it's like or what they actually desire in terms of um, the preferences. Cutting your coat according to your cloth necessarily means that you have a let material for cloth in the first place. And so when President um, Bola Tinumbu came on board and he had to take some bold steps and bold decisions to stop the bleeding. And in stopping this bleeding, trying to cover uh, the areas of blooding from two, well, two main angles, unification of the exchange rate, um, which again was getting a lot of arbitrage to the wrong set of persons and then, you know, the petrol subsidy. Now, what this has done is that it moved the exchange rates to dollar from 471 or they are about to 751 at the end of June. And that you have to now re restate mm. your balance sheets. And so 471 to 471, it may not necessarily be a quantum leap in additional loans that have been gotten, but you are now restating to the reality of the moment. The fiat allocation has gone up basically because we now have more money that's now being shared by states that will have gone into things like a bit of a soft subsidy, but it still becomes a double-edged sword. So right. I saw that because unless you really sit down and take a holistic way of looking at, at things, the labor unions are still there. The university unions are still there. Mm. You know, uh, palliatives, we don't know where they are coming from. They are real, they are necessary, and they must happen, but they all have consequences that must be managed. Hopefully, we now have um, a new sheriff uh, in town, in, in the Central Bank of Nigeria. I'm talking of uh, Dr. Kandosu. Now, I can, I can uh, who, just who to... Be able to look at that properly. Of course. Uh, just to um, wrap things up now, because we're pressed for time, this is a state where these states are in, and um, it's the reality on ground. So uh, when you look at the uh, mineral resources that these states have, um, their IGR level and their fiscal position, how would you advise them to find a way in paying back these loans, considering uh, the present global economic realities? What would you tell them as to how to reduce these debts or pay to reduce the burden, not only on the state, because it definitely would have an intended effect on the country? I say we should find a way to go the South African way. Um, let's get a kind of a holding company that now looks deep into what has been gotten and the way they should index them. I want to see a situation that the budgets that they have prepared, um, can we look at it again and get foreign private investors to come in and take that chunk out of the balance sheet? Can we try and do PPP, private, uh, public, uh, partnership. public pa private partnership, to now begin to now then look at this and then reprioritize um, all the things that we need to do we should not necessarily want to continue on the other same path. What is this hype about uh, many of these states having their own mm. airports uh, and all that, oh. when they know that some of these things are just not viable? Uh, okay, finally, okay. finally, 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 okay. let's lead by example. Cut mm. your quote according to your club. First lady, first son, first <laughs> whatever on all the states and, you know, um, Super assistant to the assistant. So well, to I, the can, I can and actually. That. We understand. need to be very, very careful and we need to be very, very serious. Mm. Otherwise, we are in peonage. There is a red flag mm. and there is a red flag and we are, we are, we are in a dire, dire situation. Uh, well, hopefully, I can, hopefully. I can, I can thank you so much. I know you have so much that you want to say. Shakespeare made it in but, Margaret Act 1, Prince in 3. This supernatural soliciting cannot be good, cannot be ill. 
All right. Now, uh, I can, let me, let's just end it this way. We know that um, there are infrastructural um, deficits in this country and for guests and for, of course, uh, when you talk about uh, the investors, these are the things that they look at. But then, Akin Fatunke, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you very much.